Amen. As you're seated, open your Bible to St. John chapter 2. Glad to see some of you from different parts of the world. Amen. See Europe, Africa in here. Glory to God. Amen. Glad to see some of you I haven't physically seen in a while. But good to see you. Of course, I'll make my way to you soon. Praise God. If I haven't been there recently. Amen. St. John chapter 2. Just one verse here, something that, that um, uh, the mother Mary said, said about Jesus in verse 5. His mother saith unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Look at your neighbor and say this, neighbor, whatever God tells you to do, do it. Find another neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, whatever the Lord tells you to do, do it. That's one for the Father, one for the Son. Let's get one for the Holy Ghost. Find a third person. Turn around, look in front of you, whatever you got to do. Tell them, neighbor, neighbor, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus whatever the Lord tells you to do, through the Holy Ghost, make sure you do it. Amen. Praise God. Now, of course, every operation with God requires faith. Amen. Without it, you can't please God. The Bible told us and much more. And we know that there are five elements to faith. You know, I wrote a book on it. The first one is hearing. Faith comes up by Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing, hear with the natural ear, hear with the heart, and it's a continuing thing. Praise God. It's not faith comes by having heard, but by hearing. Then faith comes by receiving. James 1, 21. Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Praise God, your mind, your will, and emotions. Then, praise God, that's when you make a decision about believing and you believe with the heart. With the heart, man believes on the righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made to salvation. Romans 10, 10, and many other verses. Amen. Faith continues to operate through speaking. Jesus said, speak to the mountain and tell it to move. Say, Amen. So you are trapped by the word of your mouth. Praise God. Whosoever shall say to the mountain. And then the last one is James 1, 22. Praise God. Be ye doers of the word and not just hearers only and don't, don't just stop there with that verse, deceiving yourself. So you can be an individual, praise God, that you can be self-deceived and not know it because you heard it. Maybe you received it. You might believe it, even talk it. But you don't do it. Now, the most important one of the five, of course, is hearing. If you don't get the hearing, then you don't have the receiving, the believing, the speaking, nor the acting. And so the, the first one, the most important one, of course, then is hearing and hearing. And, of course, the things you do to be able to hear from God. Hallelujah. Amen. There are numerous ways in which you can hear God speaking to you. God speaks to you through the word. God speaks to you through the inward, praise God, or inside witness. Praise God. There's the voice of your own spirit. We call it conscience. Praise God if you're born again. There's the more authoritative voice of the Holy Ghost, his voice when he may speak to you. And, of course, the Lord can speak to you through visions and through dreams. Amen. Praise God. You can have an angel speak to you. There are many different ways in which God can speak to you so that you can hear, so that you can do the other four. Now, I have been in ministry, public ministry, for 50 years this year. And so, praise God, amen. And I can tell you after 50 years, I mean, when I hear my daughter talk about she's been in it 25 years, and I guess I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit older, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. But praise God, I've learned over 50 years of ministry that uh, after that number one, the one that seems to be the most difficult for people is number five, the doing. Amen. And so we'll take a look at some of these things today and, and tomorrow and see what the Lord has to tell us about it. Turn to Acts chapter 1, praise God. Give me three hallelujahs this morning. In Acts chapter 1, of course, uh, the Acts of the Holy Spirit. We read here in verse 1. 
the former treaties have I made, O Theopolis, of all this that Jesus began both to do, I'd underline, I underline in my Bible, he, he did, both to do and to teach. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost. Again, that's another place to underline. Jesus did everything we're going to read. He did it through the auspices of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Had given his commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Look at your name and say, you're chosen too. And so we will see here that the Holy Ghost then gave to the Lord Jesus to give instruction commandments to the apostles, things that they were to do, to whom also, he says, he showed himself, that is Jesus, alive after his passion by many infallible deeds or proofs, being seen of them 40 days. So they are going to be face to face with him for almost six weeks, 40 days. And what's he doing with them for 40 days? He's speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, I can show you just a couple of things that I know that he spoke to them during those, during those 40 days. In fact, I'll show you one right now. Uh, amen. Uh, turn, if you would, to Matthew 28. Praise God. 28 chapter Matthew, he told them. He said in verse 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, Oh, uh, Exousia, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach or make disciples of all ethnos, every single racial group. See, that word nations is ethnicity, means ethnicity. All people everywhere baptize them in the onum of the word names, authority, and character of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost. Instruct them. To thereo is the word to observe. Teach these people how to guard from loss, how to guard against injury by keeping their eye upon the word. Teach them how to do that, praise God. All the things whatsoever I have commanded you, look, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. So he told them several things. He said, I gave, I, I have authority. I gave it to you. You are to go. You are to make disciples of every people everywhere and teach them how to remain. See, so those, those are part of the 40-day instructions he gave. He gave him another instruction. Turn to Mark 16. Praise God. Amen. Mark 16, and very familiar. He says in verse 15, he said unto them, Go. Into all. What does all mean? How much is left after all? Nothing. Nothing. Go unto all the world. Sounds like to every nation. And preach the gospel to every, all, every creature. He that is baptized and saved shall be, uh, baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these say, say my own. The word signs means indications and miracles. These indications and miracles shall follow the believer. In my own, in my authority, in my character, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with fresh tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, I shall not hurt them. They lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, sat on the right hand of God. They went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with and confirming the word with those signs, indications, following all men. Now that term, they went everywhere, didn't happen for a long time. So even though the Lord had given them instruction, it took them a while for them to do it. Now go back to Acts chapter 1, and let's, let's kind of, Walk through this just a little bit more. I need three hallelujahs this morning. I hope Pastor Michelle woke y'all up. Hallelujah. 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 Is that chapter one again? And notice what he said. 
we left off a verse that he's teaching things pertaining to the kingdom of God, being assembled together with, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Praise God. So here's another instruction he gives. When they therefore would come together, they ask him, Lord, will thou uh, at this time restore again the kingdom of, to Israel? In other words, make us the most powerful nation on earth. He said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or, or the season which the Father had put in his own power. But let me tell you something that's more important right now. But you shall receive do them. It's that Greek word for power. Miracle working ability. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, what I just told you about. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, southern Israel, and in Samaria. Uh oh. Now, Samaria is a place they're not going to go. Those are half Jews, half Gentiles, you know. Uh, amen. So that was, again, an eye opener to them, but it should not have bothered them because he's already told them twice. You go into all the world, right? Uh, amen. And, in t and unto the uttermost part of the world. So he tells them again, this is at least that I can find, at least the third time he tells them what they ought to do. Uh, amen. Praise God. Then when he had spoken these things, they saw him, he was taken up, clout received them out of his sight. Well, praise God. Verse 13. And when they would come in, they went into an upper room where abode Peter and James and John. All right, Lord. The Lord said, don't go past it. They go back to verse 8. All right. You shall receive dunamis. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, this is important. Turn to Acts chapter 10. The Lord wanted me not to pass by this. Okay. Amen. See, Jesus was saying a mouthful to them when he said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you'll be witnesses. Because we read Acts 10, 38, it reads as follows. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. So he's telling them what's on me, now going to be on you. And that the miracles that I did are also going to follow you. And he's telling them a mouthful there before he sends them out. Praise God. He said, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. I always knew there was something wrong with that word and there, because an and is normally a, a conjunction, right? You have something, and then and, you got another one, right? So how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, there ain't no separation between the Holy Ghost and power. <laughs> I mean, the Holy Ghost is the power. Acts 1 8, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Well, you know, the, the translation teams, of course, took seven years to, tra to translate, praise God, uh, and uh, from Greek. And there were 47 translators who were involved in doing that, okay? And so you, you have the word and, and the word and is, is uh, chi in Greek. And uh, there are 15 different, when you talk about English, there are 15 different words they could have chose, you know. They could have, they could have chose several different ones instead of the word and. Uh, for, for example, they could have chose the word even. That's in that meaning. It's also the word kai. They could have said, praise God, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, even power, even supernatural ability. That word also, there's another word they could have used out of this, the word therefore. Okay? They could have said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, therefore, with power. Went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil. But why? Well, praise God. I just point this out to you because morning people like you will come to services in the morning like this are people who are Bible students. Right? Praise God. So that's, it's always necessary that you understand because even though you had translators, most of them were not say filled with the Holy Ghost and have revelation. They're language experts. See, so sometimes they will not do things in context, right? They should have known one eight, right? 
Good. You shall receive power. There is no difference. So the point I'm making to you, however, is that what Jesus was telling them in Acts 1 8 is that the same force, that's another word that's also the word Kai, it's the word force. You shall receive uh, how God anointed Jesus and the Holy Ghost and with force power. Who weren't about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Oh, amen. He's telling them the force that was on me moving out the devil. Okay. Praise God. When you use my authority, that force can be used by you wherever you go in the world. And that's what he's saying, right? Now, let's go back to that Acts chapter 1. All right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, even though the Lord told them that, they didn't get all of it. They didn't get it. You know, when the, when the Lord speaks to us sometimes, we don't always get it. We don't always get all that he's saying. No, we don't get the depth of what he's saying. Or we, don't, we just don't. They didn't either. And I know they didn't. Praise God. We already seen three times he told them going to all the world. You don't, you're not going to see Peter, praise God, even deal with a Gentile, another group, until Acts chapter 10. Right? You're going to have Cornelius there. And Cornelius is going to have a vision. And the Lord's going to tell him, he said, because of your prayer and your giving, Praise God. These things are going to happen under you. Peter's on the house. Stop praying. Most of y'all know this. I don't have to read it, right? Peter's on the house. Stop praying. Praise God. And the Lord says, rise, Peter, kill it. He'd have to show him all, kind, all kinds of uh, things. Praise God. And Peter said, not so, Lord. I've never eaten anything common or unclean. And God says, what you have called clean, uh, uh, unclean, don't you call that anymore. What I call clean is clean. Then he's going to direct Peter, praise God, to do what? He's going to direct him to go with three men to these Gentiles for the first time. And he's going to say, praise God, over there in chapter 10, he's going to say, you know I'm not supposed to be here with you Gentiles, but the Lord has shown me. All right, let's go read it, y'all, looking at me like a, like a dog with a new pen. I mean, go over to Acts chapter 10, praise God. Let's just read it. Thank you, Jesus. So we are already in chapter 10. Now, Jesus told him all this, what's going to happen long before, before the day of Pentecost, right? So let's pick up, praise God. There's that word Cornelius in verse 1, in Italian. Verse 2, he gave much alms to the people, prayed to God always. Verse 3, he saw in a vision the angel of God coming in unto him. Tell him, verse 4, your prayers and your alms are coming for more for before God. Verse 6 tells us that Simon... Praise God, whose house is by the seaside. He's, he shall tell thee what you ought to do. We read in verse 10, he's very hungry. He falls into a trance. He saw heaven open, certain vessels descending unto him. It had been a great sheep near the four corners, let down the earth. Where were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things found the air? Came a voice to him, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, not so, Lord, I've never eaten anything that is uncommon or unclean. The voice spake unto him again a second time, what God has cleansed. You shall not call common. This was done three times. The vessel was seized up again to heaven, Peter. And now while Peter doubted himself what this vision meant, right? The Holy Ghost, verse 19, says unto him, I'm sending three men, go, go with him. I sent him, praise God. We get down to uh, verse 24. The morning after they entered into Caesarea, Cornelius waited for them. He called together his kinsmen, near friends. Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, fell down on his feet, worshiped him. Peter said, stand up, I'm a man too. And then he says in verse 28, you know it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into one of another nation. Well, that's not what Jesus said. Okay. I mean, Peter is still abiding by what men said. And not abiding by what Jesus said. In fact, he has lost the revelation. Amen. And we know at least three times, at least three times, and I guarantee you it's more than that, but at least three times, the Lord specifically said this to, to him. Praise God. But God has shown me, well, God showed him at the beginning, that I should not call any man common or unclean. Verse 35, every nation that fears him and work of righteousness is accepted with him. 
guess what? Peter's starting to see it now. He's starting to see it already. Praise God. Then he's going to preach that famous message. How God anointed Jesus of man with the Holy Ghost, praise God, even with supernatural ability. Who went about doing good, healing all, 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 he understand the context. All that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Verse 44, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them Gentiles. And the Jews that were there were astonished as many that came with Peter because the Holy Ghost was poured out on them. Chapter 11, what happened? Chapter 11, praise God, after they were filled with the Holy Ghost, then the Jews come on Peter. I, I'm, I'm not going to quote this stuff. I'm not in a hurry. Let's read it. Chapter 11. Praise God. Amen. The apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were the circumcision, or the Jews, contended with him. They opposed him, saying, you went in to the men uncircumcised. And not only that, you ate with them. Then Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded by order unto them, saying, then he tells them all, all that happened. He said in verse 12, the Spirit is the one that bade me to go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren, they were with me. We entered into the man's house. Praise God. And he showed unto us how he had seen an angel in his house, stood, sent unto them, send men to Joppa, call for Simon, whose surname was Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. So I began to speak. The Holy Ghost fell on them just like at us. Then remembered, then remembered I. Then remembered I. What have you forgotten the Lord has told you? Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. We read that in chapter 1. Now he remembers. For as much then as God gave them like gift as he did unto us, who believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, what am I I can withstand God? But the point I'm making to you is even though Jesus spoke to them, they didn't get it. Amen. He didn't get it. He didn't get it. He heard it. So you can hear the word. You can hear the Lord speak to you. You can hear the Lord give you an instruction. But that doesn't mean that you're willing to receive it. Obviously, he wasn't willing to receive part of that word. He was willing to receive the go to Jerusalem and minister to the Jews. But going to Samaria... And going to the uttermost parts of the earth, I don't know about that. See? So we don't know when he really received it, certainly believed it, certainly wasn't speaking it, and absolutely wasn't acting upon it. Even though Jesus himself appeared to him and Jesus hand taught him face to face where he could see Jesus for six weeks. Wow. Now that should teach us something already. I mean, how many times has the Lord said something to you, but you haven't done it yet? How many things have been lost? You heard it, but you didn't commit to it. Okay, amen? You did not only receive it, believe it, speak it all the time now, and then went and did it. And remember what the... What Praise God, our opening text was, whatever he said to you, do it. See, so all of us at some time or other have fallen short of number five. Number five is James 1, 1 22, Be doers of that word. Peter wasn't. Okay? So time went between, a lot of time, from chapter one all the way here to this particular event. Now, go back to Acts chapter 1. Let's look at some more. I need three hallelujahs, somebody. I need three praise the Lord, somebody. And I need three teach bishops, somebody. Oh, thank you. I'll teach. Since you. Yes, amen. Praise God. So then, so then notice then verse 13. So then when they were coming, they went into the upper room where abode Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, son of Alphaeus, son of uh, Zealots, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued. So they did go to Jerusalem. They continued, praise God. Man, t 
torn page. My Bible so old, I got I was taping tape, I was taping torn pages this morning. They are but one accord in prayer and supplication, definite request with the women. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brother. So the mother Mary is in the upper room too. In those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of names together were about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost, by the mouth of David, spake before concerning Judas, which was God to them that took, took Jesus. And, you know, uh, he's given them scripture. That's Psalm 41, 9. So Peter, he's going to quote to them, you know, the scripture said this. Then he's going to continue. For he was numbered with us and had obtained partner or, or obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity falling headlong. He burst asunder in the midst and all his God, but bowels were gushed out. It was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem insomuch as that field is called in their proper name, a seldoma, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms. Psalm 69, 25, you'll find it there. Let his habitation be desolate. Let no man dwell therein. And his office or bishopric or charge, let another take. So Peter's now scripture like, scripture like we like to say, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Right? So he's gone to the word multiple times to establish his point to say, I am on scriptural grounds here. Wherefore, of these men which have accompanied with us all the time the Lord Jesus went in among us, beginning from the baptism of John until that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. I haven't found that. Who said it only had to be one? I didn't find anywhere in the scripture where it said it had to be only from the group that was with them. And only people who were there at the beginning. Amen. So the man had two or three witnesses to establish the word, but then he got into his own mind about how is God going to fix this problem. Anybody been here? I got slapped upside the head by Dad Hagen with doing that. I sure did. I was preaching for him on his camp meetings. Amen. And uh, 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 in the night session, I'm sitting next to Mom Hagen, of course, okay, and Pastor Deborah. I'm sitting next to Mom Hagen. Dad's up on the, he's up on the platform. He, you know, he's a Bible teacher and a prophet of God. And you can, you can always tell when he's got over until the prophet's anointing came on. And that prophet's anointing came on him. And then, praise God, he began to prophesy and do as the Lord led him. Then he stepped off the stage, and he came down, started heading to where we were sitting. Now, Dad Higgins always seemed to have the word of God for me wherever, all the time. I mean, I used to travel around the country. He'd be somewhere, and I'd show up. Okay, amen. Because he's my spiritual father. I'm going to go show up. So I'd go over there, and, I'd, and the Lord always had invariably a word. Many times, he'd call me up, many times. Many times. So I thought, here comes another word from God for me. Now, at this particular time, a uh, word of faith needed a real miracle. We, we needed a real answer. And I'm trying to figure out, okay, amen. I mean, I'm in faith, but I'm trying to figure out how this is going to happen. So Dad Hagen steps down, and he steps right there in front of me. He's gone. And then I just knew here comes the word of God. And he hauled off and smacked me. 15,000 people. There. He smacked me. I mean, he hit me hard. Pow. It's on YouTube somewhere, I understand. <laughs> he smacked me. And the word of the Lord was, you think too much. Well, I got it. I mean, I got it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and what I got was, get your head out of this. Trying to figure this out, just believe and call it done. We had the miracle after that. Too bad I had to go through that to get it. 
But you know, praise God, you know, Sister Deborah, sometimes, if I get a little bit too analytical, she'll say to me, you want me to smack you? <laughs> Just to remind me, get out of your analytical head, trying to figure out how God is going to get done, especially a word he's already spoken to. Okay, amen? Now look at your neighbor and slap. No, no, don't, don't, don't. No, 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 no. No, that's not a word from the Lord, all right? All right, so he, he tells them. So he decides, well, now I got scripture here. Now I want you to know, I want you to see this. I have scripture to stand on. There's supposed to be a replacement. Somebody else is supposed to have his bishopric. It makes sense that it has to be from the people who are here from the beginning is one of us brothers. I mean, it seemed to make sense, except it wasn't God's plan. Let's keep on reading here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, verse 22. Beginning from the baptism of John until that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. There appointed two, Joseph called uh, Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed. And said, Thou, Lord, which know the hearts of all men, show whether of these two you have chosen. So they limited God. You ever limit God before? I know it's got to come through this kind of way. Got to come through my job. I don't know how the one's going to come through my job. But, it, I mean, they got to give me a raise. If they didn't give me the raise, Lord, what's going on? I'm mad. Okay, these two, praise God, that you have chosen that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgressions fell, that it might go to his own place. And he gave forth their lots. Lots. The flesh that take you to here. Okay, amen. So then they're going to take lots and they're going to determine from the lots what the will of God is. They're going to take a natural thing to decide a spiritual decision. And you never decide a spiritual decision with any natural force. Glory to God. The lot, read the rest of it on the screen. The lot fell on Matthias. He's numbered with the 12. And that's the last time you ever heard of Matthias. Because God has somebody else in mind. The last person they would have ever chose. A young man much later. Hallelujah. Much later. A young man who was the absolute opponent of, of them all, one of them all dead and was doing everything he could to make sure they were dead. And that's the one that God's going to fulfill this scripture with. Amen. So you never make decisions on your own because you will get it wrong. Now, so we're talking about whatever he says, do it. Now turn to 2 Kings chapter 5. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now there were a number of things in what we shared there that are big. Amen. They got the word from the Lord multiple times. Time went between it. They didn't do it. They didn't follow through with it. Yeah, Lord, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, go back to Acts chapter 6. Holy Ghost, want me to stay here for a minute. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Chapter 6, then. So, after the Lord had told them all of that, praise God, and they're having success in ministry, thousands of people are there now with them. We read chapter 6, verse 1. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, in those days, Amen. See, a lot of times you read the Bible and it's Monday and you think about Wednesday, these things happen. No, man. I mean, you need to really start thinking about how long it's going to take to be able to gather these people. How long it's going to take to be able to find a place for these people. How long it's going to take to do all those various things. Come on, somebody. Amen. There arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. That's racial strife. One of Satan's favorite tools. 
because their widows neglected in the daily administration. So, praise God, the twelve called the multitude of disciples and them and says, now reason we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brother, look unto you, of course, we get the first seven deacons, which is uh, Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, who's going to turn out to be a bad dude later on. He's going to start out really well here. Nicholas is going to. But at the end of the day, he's going to be Mr. Nickelodeon. He's going to change. You can start out well. This man started, every one of these seven was full of faith in the Holy Ghost. Okay, amen. So this is not a one-time thing. You have to walk this walk by faith, paying attention to what you're doing every day. He's going to wind up being in Nickelodeon and Revelations. Amen. Whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. The word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied. Note these two words, in Jerusalem. And a great company of priests will be into the faith. Well, that's nice. Praise God, people getting saved in, in Jerusalem, and some of the priests are. But what was the three-time instruction? Go into where? Okay, Jerusalem, Judea, no mention of Samaria, definitely not the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. Why? They didn't receive the whole thing. They just didn't receive it. And besides, they got some success going on right here, right now. I mean, it's looking good, people getting saved and all of that. But all of that wasn't, of course, it was the will of God. People got saved. Of course it was. Hallelujah. But it was not a fulfillment of all the will of God for them. Amen. They all right there. So what happens? Well, they, they, they do that. Then we get to chapter 7, and you're going to have, of course, one of them, Stephen, is going to wind up being the martyr. Chapter 8 said they're going to be what? Dispersed all over the whole, whole world because of persecution. That young man, Paul, is going to be holding the coats of those who killed Stephen. Right? Now, sometimes, unfortunately, Sometimes because we don't follow what God told us to do when he said to do it, when it's windows of opportunity, praise the Lord, the door gets open for Satan to come in and kill, steal, and destroy. That's what happened to them. And so receiving everything God told you, not having to understand it with your brain. Glory to God. Being willing to do whatever he said to whoever he said to do it, whatever that price might be, and it might mean you have to, <laughs> praise God, go to other nations. It might mean, praise God, you might have to go here, go here, or there are people you don't like or don't know or don't speak your language. Yeah. Glory to God. But we see what happens. Now, now, okay, Lord, can I go now? <laughs> now go to 2 Kings chapter 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you're quiet because the Lord is talking to you, right? Is that, is that why you're not saying amen? That's the reason why you're you, you chewing on this, right? Uh, you're right? Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, in 2 Kings chapter 5, we're talking about whatever he says to you, do it. And I know everyone in here, the Lord has said things to do. Don't tell me he hasn't said it. I know he said it. He has said things to you to do. Now, that doesn't mean you, you were in the place to hear it. Amen. You may not be listening to that inward witness. You may not be listening to that inward voice. You may not be listening to the voice of the Holy Ghost. You may not be following that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, amen. But I know he's spoken to everyone in here. Just like he spoke to me. There's no doubt about it. He's speaking to you. Now, I mean, how long ago did God tell you certain things? You just kind of, well, it didn't happen, so I must have missed God. Uh, I don't mean you missed God. The follow-up was the problem. Thank you for the zero amens on that one. Oh, my Lord. I'm going to have to do it myself. Amen. Glory to God. Woo, that man preached. Teach the word, Mr. Goldberg. I say amen to myself. Y'all ain't going to say amen. Follow-up was the problem. 
God requires time with him. Sure does. He requires a lot. What we do, we, we, we get a half word from God, some word from God, or we get excited. And I guarantee you, amen, that uh, Peter and the rest of the disciples were all excited. Well, why wouldn't they be? They were very excited because they thought they lost. Amen. They huddled in the room, said they're going to come kill us next since they killed Jesus. And then Jesus walks through the wall. Well, I bet that got their attention. He, in his Bible said, they were, <laughs> he walked through the wall. He says, give me something to eat. Right? He eats in front of them, and then he tells them some more stuff about what's going to happen about the Holy Ghost and John. Okay, amen. Breathe on you, and whosoever sins you retain will be retained. Whosoever sins you lose will be loosed. I mean, he tells them a bunch of stuff, praise God. Well, man, man, I mean, you'd be fired up. Not only did you not lose, the man's in front of you. And not only that, now he teaches me his secrets for six weeks. You think they're not fired up? Well, yeah, they fired up. That's why chapter 3, he goes to that gay beautiful Peter and John. See that man sitting there and says, man, he says, I ain't got no money. I don't need none. Rise in Jesus. Yeah, they fired up. Big time fired up. They got excited, and sometimes that's a problem. Because we may get a little word from God, or we may have some success in an area, and the, the, the excitement causes us to wind up being sloppy. And missing all the important, minor, we think minor, little steps that the Lord has wanted to say or is saying. Or if you had spent a little bit more time instead of running off, because when we think we got a word, we're gone. Now, see, when I was a young, young minister, that's exactly what it been me, okay? Amen. And it has some success. Hallelujah. But I learned was in this, this, there's a real thing about being around a long time. And you couldn't have told me that when I was younger, but I know this now. It's very true. Come on, somebody. Amen. Now I know. Okay, so I got the word. Now let's sweat details. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to spend some more time with God to get some details, real details, get some timing on this matter. Not be calm down. We're happy we got the word, but calm down because there's a lot more to it. Ooh, I'm preaching to somebody. It's a lot more to this matter. Hallelujah. And so sure enough, it made them miss part of it. We've already seen, right? Now here in 2 Kings, we read about this guy, Naaman, right? Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master. He's an honorable man, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. Boy, there's a whole lot there. I'm going to go by it today. But he was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Ooh, awful. Leprosy, they didn't have care for that then. Awful. But he, man, was so great, they tolerated that. The guy's a great leader. The Syrians had gone out by companies, had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. Now, again, because I'm talking to people who are more Bible students, I'm assuming you'll know certain things, praise God. So he's told, now there's a prophet there, a man of God, Elisha, over there in Israel, Go over there and that man will heal your leprosy. So Naaman gathers up his folk. They start heading on down there. Let's pick up verse 9. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, Go wash in Jordan seven times and your flesh shall come again to, to you. You'll be clean. Now you understand Naaman Naaman is the head of the Syrian military. He's the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He's a man people bow down to. He's a man people are afraid of. He's a man who is given dignity and honor. You understand who this is? Okay, amen? Praise God. You need to understand if Charles Brown comes in here today, he's the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, United States military. If General Brown came in here with all this stuff, 
He came on the stage. Trust me, we are going to give him some respect. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, amen. Praise God. That's who this is. The prophet don't even come outside. The prophet don't even speak to him directly. He just sent a messenger to him and said, tell him to do this. Naaman is upset. He's angry. He went away and, and, and said, look, I thought, underline them two words. Oh, Lord. Hey, oh, Lord. Here we go again. I thought. Amen. Tell your neighbor, get I thought out of your lexicon. Boy, them two words get you in more trouble. I thought. How many times have you looked back and said, you know, I thought. Well, why did you make that mistake? A number of reasons. Okay. Praise God. But he says, now I thought, because this is the way this, I played this out in my mind. He will surely come out to me and stand. And he will call on the name of the Lord, his God, strike his hand all over the place. He's taking to see thunder and lightning and, you know, all sorts of stuff. He said, are not Abana and Pama and, and uh, Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than these dirty waters here in Israel? I baptize people in those dirtiest waters. I mean, I mean, I'd rather wash in them and be clean. So he turned, he went away in a rage. He's upset. His servants came in and said unto him, Father, now, if the prophet had bid you to do some really great, wonderful, outlandish thing, you would have done what he said, right? So what, so what about if he tell you to just go wash and be clean? Verse 14. Now, to Naaman's credit, he had ears to hear regardless of where it came from. You know, God can use a little child not only to speak to you, God can use a young child even to heal you. That. That happened to me, praise God. I'm here in this building on the other side. I came in, you know, we used to have a school there. We're about to do it again, praise God. But I, I, but I had a school over there called Faith Christian Academy for 20 years. Praise, like I said, I'm about to do it again. Uh, and uh, hallelujah. And so, but I came in, I, I mean, my body was sick, but I wasn't giving in to it, you know. So, so that's why I came in. I came in to work anyway. I mean, I wasn't feeling whatever. But I'm saying, no, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. And I came on in. And I went in there, and they had the, you know, the five-year-olds and six-year-olds. And they, they had them lined up along the wall. You know, I guess they're going to the bathroom. I don't know where they're going, bathroom or whatever. But anyway, they, they got the kids all lined up. And I'm walking past, you know, and the kids, when they see me, you know, they were like, oh, the pastor's here, you know. They, they, they're really excited when they see me, praise God. And this little girl comes up to me. And she looks in my face, and I guess she could tell I wasn't feeling well. And you know how kids talk with their whole face? Yeah, amen. I had one that was really like that. That was Michelle. <laughs> you know, Michelle could talk with a whole face, you know. <laughs> amen. And a little girl comes up to me, she says, she says, what's the matter, pastor? <laughs> and I said, well, honey, I'm taking healing. And it was like, she knew what that meant because she immediately took a little hand and shoved it in my stomach. Come out of him in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Shock me. I got totally healed right there to there. God can use anybody he want to use. Hallelujah. And he may even speak to you through your little child or he might even use a donkey to preach. So at least we give him credit. He has ears to hear. You got to keep your ears open. You got to listen all the time. Hallelujah. The source could be one that even, you know, God can even speak to you through your enemy. They don't even know that it's the word of God. That's it. Amen. So he, so he went down and dipped himself seven times, not six. There's a reason why I said seven. Because when he went down the fifth time, nothing happened. He went down the sixth time, nothing happened. It wasn't what God said. He went down that seventh time, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. 
Man, he was really happy. I would really be happy if I was cleared of leprosy. Are you kidding me? Yeah, hallelujah. Amen. He said, here, take, take all the money you want. Take all the clothes you want. Here, here, here. Let, let me bless you. He's so happy. But here's the real question here. Suppose Naomi didn't do what he was told. Clearly, healing power was available for him. But suppose he didn't go and dip in the River Jordan. Suppose when he did, he only dipped two times and said, because you know Satan telling him, this is crazy. This is stupid. This water's nasty. I mean, the time, man, I was baptizing people in the Jordan River. I've done it several times. And uh, I just remember the last time I did it, I was baptizing the Jordan River, of course, people that we took over to Israel. And when I'm standing there in the water, man, a little fish was. Now, I'm trying not to. I don't know if it's because I'm brown or what it was. But, man, them fish was going all around my feet. And they was, you know, they was, I got to baptize my father in that water, you know. But, but I'm, I'm baptizing people, you know, and I'm, all the time I'm. I'm doing this, <laughs> you know. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, this wasn't no fun. I'm, and I baptized like a hundred-something people that day. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I can imagine, you know, he's standing there and Satan talked to him. How do you know Satan would talk to you? Oh, yeah. Satan talked to him the whole time. He said, you know, he's, he's looking at this. He said, now look, this is silly. But he pressed through. didn't do all. Now, what did it say about Noah? Why is it that Noah and his family were the only ones who survived the flood? You know what it says several times in Genesis chapter 7, Genesis chapter 8, Genesis chapter 9? Noah did all the Lord commanded him to do. And he did it over a course of 100 years. 20 years he just preached and then 100 years he had to build it. Can you imagine the whole time how much ridicule will you get? You know when they found the ark they have found it now at, at uh, Mount Ararat they have found it now. Praise God I've seen pictures of it and all that. But, but can, you, can you imagine for 100 years you telling people judgment is coming it's going to rain you building this thing, the only thing people working on is you and your sons. I guess it would take 100 years to build a ship that is 515 feet long and that's 75 feet wide and that is triple decker, three stories, and that is divided in such a way so they could take two of everything on earth. What a ship that had to be. I mean, that's as large as an Aegis, uh, Aegis United States cruiser, man. That's a huge thing. Big ship. Are you listening to me? And the whole time he's doing this, and God told him exactly what to do. You take gopher wood, and you then you, you apply pitch to it. In other words, you got to do this exactly this way so that it'll be waterproof. Proof. You cannot miss a step. No step. Amen. You miss a step. Guess what? The thing sinks. You die with everybody else. God chose the man because the man would do all that the Lord told him to do. Hallelujah. And don't you know the Lord had to be speaking to him all the time for 100 years. You got a problem over here. Go fix it. These things are not easy to do, building something like that. Are you listening to me? All you got is just your sons. Amen. You need to make this curve. The Lord's giving him instructions all along, things that sometimes we think are minor are not minor. I'm preaching better. I'm getting amen. That little thing that you, that you just wouldn't forgive about that person so many years ago, you just kind of let it go. You think it's just a minor thing. It's not affecting nothing. Oh, no. Yes, it is. That's what's getting water in your boat. You got to do all that the Lord said to do. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. But guess what? You got to do whatsoever he said to do. Hallelujah. 
You know, our very first building that uh, we had, this is our sixth, I think, building, this one here, praise God. But our very first one, when we started, not long, just about two miles from here, praise God. We, we were in a little storefront, 15121 West 8 Mile Road. Little storefront, last I saw it, I think it was a flower shop. It was a little tiny thing, a little, little tiny thing. With, uh, we had nine parking spaces. We had no carpet. We had no padded seats. We just had some metal folding chairs. Didn't have no air conditioning. It didn't matter what hairstyle a woman came to church in because they all left with the same one, you know, because it was so hot, you know, <laughs> et cetera. Uh, and then, of course, the Lord directs me. Now, he directs me to this building. And I'm going to tell you about that first building. I had no interest of going there. I had no interest of going to that part of town where it was. Amen. In Ferndale, 696, did not exist then. Okay. I had no interest of going there for a number of reasons. One, there was no bus service there. And a lot of my storefront people caught the bus coming to church back then. There's no bus service to even get to it, number one. Number two, we're now talking 45, 40, 44 years ago, right? 44 years ago, if you happened to have brown paint when you were born, this was no place to go. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. The rest of y'all, well, amen. So I'm not going. Why would I go over there? There ain't no bus service. Okay, and, and we had a I had a realtor, amen. And the realtor, he kept telling me, "You come on over and see this building." I said, "I'm not going over there because I'm not interested in going over there. Okay, I don't want to go over there. It makes no sense for me to go over there. I'm not going over there." He wouldn't leave me alone. He kept on every time turning around. You gotta come see this building. No, I keep telling you. Finally, doggone it. All right, I'll go over there. You leave me alone? Right? I pull up in the parking lot, and the Holy Ghost says, that's the building. <laughs> what? I said, that's it. Buy it. Shocking to me. Okay, amen. So, we entered into a deal, and it was a church parson that's right next to it. We had, so we entered into a deal for the building and the parsonage, which, unless the Lord and I would need a vision from heaven, <laughs> would not live next door to the church again under no circumstances. <laughs> okay, man. No way, because the people thought my house was the church. They show up at 2 o'clock at night in the morning. Knock on the door. I need prayer. And other things which I won't even tell you. Save time. Okay, amen. But anyway, so I, have, I got this little storefront church, right? And so I rallied them all. Because we have to raise them back then. I didn't know anything about doing everything by debt. My faith's not as big as it is today. I don't do nothing with I don't borrow money. Okay, I haven't borrowed money in years. I don't borrow money. We, if I can't get it with my faith, we ain't getting it. Okay, amen. But back then, I'm, I'm just a rookie. I'm still learning. Praise God. And so we had to put uh, some money down. We had to put $25,000 down. I mean, that sounds like a lot to you. Okay. But 43, 44 years ago, who would have thought for touch? That was like, wow. That was a ton of money. But we had to raise 80,000. We only had so much time to do it, or else we lose the 25 and we are out. So, this is a huge faith step for this little young rookie preacher. Okay, amen. And so, we're halfway into the campaign, you know, everybody giving money. We're halfway into the campaign, and my assistant pastor comes to me and he says, I'm going to stop my own church. And I said, okay, I'll support that. We, we're done with all this. Okay, and uh, amen, and we'll, we'll support it. He said, no, I'm going to do it right now. I mean, you know, that's not right. Yeah. To your neighbor, that's not right. Yeah. System pastors are not supposed to split churches. 
Amen. Good preaching. Woo! That man preaching. He's supposed to go at least 40 miles away. I teach him in my Bible school. Come on, somebody. Amen. You don't draw out of the same bucket that you came from. Wrong. So anyway, so, so <laughs> sure enough, so he starts the church, and what people I did have any money all went with him. So the only thing I'm left with is everybody on government assistance and everything else to raise most of this, most of this money. We get down to the last day, the day of closing. And that morning, I'm in the little storefront, rolling around on the bare floor, doing everything I ever heard Brother Hagin say. <laughs> I'm confessing, I'm shouting, I'm dancing, because my ministry is about to end before it got started. Right? I would have showed the people right away, I don't know what I'm doing. Amen. Then I already come in and told me, anyway, I got kids your, your age. What you going to teach me? All of that. The egg of my, it would have been blown up already before I even got started. Okay, so I'm there, I'm doing everything I could do. Then the phone rings. I go pick up the phone, praise God. There's a man, man went visit the church. Now, again, when you got a little storefront church, you should know everybody. You should know every, every name, every visitor. I mean, how in the world? You got 50 people and you don't know the people in the church? No matter what you. Come on, somebody. Well, this guy called. I know this guy's a visitor. He's been like once or twice at the church. And he says, now I don't know much about him, but I know he's a visitor. And he says, well, he said, the Lord told me to come see you. Well, I got, I'm thinking, you know, this guy's he needs counseling for something. I ain't got no time for no counseling session at 3 o'clock this afternoon. If I don't close this building, my ministry is already over in Detroit. I'm going to leave, go someplace else. Come on, somebody. Okay, amen. <laughs> so I said, come on anyway, though. So come on anyway. I'm going to help him what I can help him and go back to what I'm doing. So he shows up, and he takes out a big black book. And now my desk was a card table. <laughs> he plops it over my little card table. And he opens it up and he says, he says, now I'm the uh, lead lawyer in a Christian law firm in downtown Detroit. And the Lord told us to uh, come here and to fill in whatever amount you say. Well, I was short $30,000. I'm thinking, he's thinking maybe $3,000. Remember, $3,000 back then is a lot of money. $30,000, the equivalent of $30,000 a day got to be close to a quarter of a million. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of money. And I said, well, man, we need $30,000. He didn't even sweat. Boy, I took that. I didn't even shout, Dan. <laughs> tick, tick, tick. <laughs> I got to go. There's things I got to do, business stuff. I'll go, go past all that. Hallelujah, business stuff I got to do. But, but hey, man, we showed up all right. And when, when I walked in there, now that, that church, because it was a church, that church had already made a deal to sell it when we defaulted. They, they didn't think we could come up with it. Okay, So they already made another deal with another church. As soon as we defaulted, they were, they were ready to sign for this other church. So when I walked in the room, they didn't even say hello when I walked in the room. They said, do you have the money? And I said, of course, God supplies all I need. And another deacon over there, he said, he's talking to another deacon of this church. He says, it's amazing how that little church came up with all that money. And I said, oh, yeah, God supplies all our needs. Uh, you would have been proud of me. I acted like I do this all the time. <laughs> Sign all the papers, do all the stuff, you know, take the picture. We did all of that. No big deal whatsoever. Praise God. Now, that's the end of the story. Let me tell you what happened in the middle. Now, I'm very angry, and I'm very angry because my friend, who was my assistant pastor, my friend, split my church and put me into this position. I had no, it was going to be tough, tough, us getting the 80, period, all together. But you ended my chances in the natural by splitting my church. 
right? Because I'm really angry. And what the Lord said to me, praise God, the Lord said to me, now I want you to raise an offering for his new church. And you go over and you take it to him, put your arm around his neck and tell him you love him. And I said, Lord, you've gone too far. <laughs> what I said. I mean, I'm, but you know, if, if, if you, are you going to do what the Lord said or not? Did I like what he said? Nope. Did I want to do what he said? No. Absolutely not. I raised the offering the Sunday night service at the little storefront. The biggest offering we ever had. <laughs> Getting enough speed this up. Praise God. So I go over, I, you know, I get it done in the check. And I go over the way that. And when I walk into the room, I see him on the other side of the room, and my reflex, my, my, my body's, my fist clenched up. Everybody say, thank God for mercy. Thank see, the Lord will work with you when you're a baby, you know. I mean, he'll, he'll, he'll work with you. And so I'm, I'm going over there, bless the Lord. Amen. So. I get in front of him, and I reach and I jack him. I reach and I take the check envelope. I take the envelope, the check, and you, you know it's a check in there, right? I take the envelope out and I hand it to him. Now I was really expecting. At this point, I'm expecting, which is what he's gonna do. Okay, brother, you know that wasn't right for me to do. Some. He gonna say something. Took the check and stuffed it in his pocket. And again, I'm just being honest. I went internally. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. And I got ready to. <clears throat> I mean, I'm mad. Well, let's go. Let's throw down. Right? You don't. You don't. Now you gonna do what? And the Holy Ghost said to me. He said, "Finish what I told you to do." raised up and I said I love you brother and I resisted the urge to, you know, <laughs> I resisted the urge and didn't do it then that miracle happened and the Lord said to me when the miracle happened we shouted in the parking lot and all that and we had, then had our first service the rest is history the Lord said to me if you had not done what I said to do here I could not have done this for you. Now, some of y'all have heard that story 10 times, but you need to hear it again. Hallelujah. Suppose I hadn't done it. We would have lost the $25,000. The lease on our storefront was up that week. We wouldn't even have had any place to go to church. My ministry would have been stained right from the beginning, not even paying my bills if I hadn't done it. Would it have been the will of God for that to have been happening to me like that? Of course not. But the will of God is not automatic. The will of God is also dependent upon your obedience. Now, turn to Acts 22. Let me start coming down the home stretch. Anybody getting anything out of this? It's the Holy Ghost speaking to anybody here this morning. Praise God. I don't have afternoon sessions, and I'm not getting against anybody that does. I don't have afternoon sessions because you now have time not just to eat, but you have time then to go and meditate and let the Holy Ghost speak to you about what you heard. These two meetings, and you need to write it down. Now I use my phone because I have a note section on my phone. So I, I put stuff right there in the note section of my phone because I know I'm going to see my phone every day. Right? So I put in the, the note section of my phone things the Lord said to me. Okay? And I put it right there. And I may, who knows, I might be on a plane going, to, I was, this came from Africa not too long ago. Okay? So <laughs> might be might, might be somewhere. And then I'm going through my phone and 
Uh, let me see what's in the notes section. Then. Oh, I've been reminded five days ago, this, the Lord said. This is how I do it. This is what he said five days ago, whatever it was. And then, it, oh yeah, okay, I need, now I need to go X, Y, or Z, or whatever it is that he told me to do. But I put it into a place whereby I go. I go there all the time. I tell my wife, I said, put stuff in the notes section. They put it in the notes section. Okay, amen. Keep, keep notes on stuff. You need to do that. Praise the Lord. Now, Acts 22, praise God. Let's read here, verse 18. Let's back up to verse 14. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou should have known his will, and see that just one that should have heard the voice of his mouth, referring to Paul, praise God. Of course, Saul then. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now why tarest thou rise and be baptized? Wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, and he's testifying, of course, to about what happened to him in the past. I was in a, in a trance and saw him. I saw Jesus. And then what did Jesus say to him? Make haste. Get in a hurry. Get out of Jerusalem. Quickly. They will not receive thy testimony concerning me. Yeah, but what about the blood? What about the name? You also need to understand that all these things work together. Hearing, receiving, believing, speaking, and acting. Amen. Angelic ministry. Other things the Lord may say to you. So the Lord told him, get out of Dodge. He said the same thing to Joseph. Right? He told Joseph, he said, Herod wants to kill the baby Jesus. Go to Egypt. And you stay there. He said, you stay there. Stay there until I tell you to leave. Read, go back and read it, Luke. He said, you stay here until I tell you to leave. So what does he do? He packs up, goes, goes to Egypt. What does the psalm say? Out of Egypt I caught my son. Praise God. And then when Herod dies, then the Lord tells him, now you can return because the ones who want to kill him is dead. And now I want you to go to Galilee. So in both cases, the word of the Lord was, don't stay here, leave. And that word of the Lord can be at times what saved your life. It saved mine. I have been in this position where other people were killed. And I would have been if I had not listened and did what he said. Are you listening to me? Praise God. Well, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes what happens to believers is that they didn't make haste. Now, and I'm going to close with this. Now, I know one of, my, uh, one of my members here, minister, one of my ministers, was uh, recently over in Israel. They told me they were going to Israel. Said, fine, you know, I pray Psalm 91 over them. Uh, this is, we were just talking a few days ago. And I pray Psalm 91 over there to, over there to do certain things. Uh, and I was praying in the morning, and as I was praying, and I wasn't praying, about, I wasn't even thinking about this person. Not at all. Okay, I'm just praying about other stuff. I'm doing my normal prayer. And the Lord brought this person up to me and said, tell him to get out. Israel. Now. Whoa. So I called my secretary. Called Belinda. I said, where's so-and-so? They left yet. I didn't know they had even left yet. Yeah, they're gone. They're in Israel now. Find them. Find somebody who can get to them. Get a number on them. The Lord said, leave. Now. Amen. So eventually he found the individual. 
Okay, and then the word of the Lord was told to them. Now, they had a choice. Their choice could be, oh, uh, I understand the question was asked, has Bishop been watching the news? Okay, so like after the flesh, I'm concerned, wasn't that at all. I wasn't even thinking about that. Okay, amen. Hallelujah. You said the Lord told you to go over there. He told you that. I'm not arguing with you. You say the Lord, the Lord said it. I, I pray over you, Psalm 91. Okay, hallelujah. A thousand may fall by your side, 10,000 by your right hand. Shall not come nigh you. Angels of God, watch over and protect you, lest you dash your foot against the stone. As far as I'm concerned, I was good enough until the Lord said. Tell them to get out of Dodge. Okay, amen. So they had a choice. They could, they could say, well, you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm doing something such. Or I could do what the bishop told, them, told me to do. They chose the latter. Amen. And uh, that was when then the missiles fell. Right where they were. Above their head. Directly above. And the Lord let me know, if they hadn't obeyed, I'd be doing a funeral service. Amen? It was make haste. They made haste. And then they came back to me and told me the testimony. Are you listening to me? And then all this other stuff broke out. You know, it's Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. So there are many ways in which God brings protection to you. One of those ways could be the word of the Lord may, may sin, sin, praise God, maybe a spiritual father or some other way. The spirit of God may speak to who knows how he may get the word to you. But the, the thing is nowadays, especially at this hour, you find out what God's saying and don't take your time. Get in a hurry about it. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell three people, just do it. Just do, it. do it. Figure it out later. Just do it. Do the word of the Lord. Get your head out of there. Don't let the devil tell you why um, or whatever he wants to tell you. Just do it. In times like these, that may be what saved your life. I'm a living witness in many cases. And today I am alive today because of this very thing. Stand with me.